The 2022 Indianapolis Colts were all about divorce, but today we're going to discover how they can find perfect holy matrimony this offseason. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I'm Jake Arthur and he's Zach Hicks. You know the two of us from HorseshoeHuddle.com. Uh, apologies right off the bat for my my camera whatever is going on in this i have tried for days to get this figured out sometimes i get it to work sometimes i do not but we're just rolling with it because we're not waiting all night to record Um, but uh today you know zach and i were kicking around some ideas you guys love hearing about this head coach stuff but we got to break out the monotony a little bit so we're going to put that together with the next best topic quarterbacks uh and you know you need a new head coach, you need a new quarterback, but you have to find that right combination. So we're going to take a dive into three different combinations, uh, the perfect head coach and quarterback marriages that will service the Colts for the long term. Uh, so we're going to go over um, Bengals offensive coordinator Brian Callahan and Ohio State quarterback uh, C.J. Stroud, and then Giants offensive coordinator Mike Kafka and Kentucky quarterback Will Levis, and then lastly, Eagles offensive coordinator Shane Steichen and Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson. And uh, Zach has done a ton of research into these guys already. I, I know a good deal, but not not as much as Zach, so he'll he'll be able to shower us here with with the knowledge. But uh, so basically, how we did these was basically just you know the the type of quarterback that these coaches have had the most success with for the most part. And, you know, there, this the top of this quarterback class kind of gives you a little bit of everything. And we have found pretty much perfect matches for everyone. So, uh, Zach, leading us off here, Brian Callahan and C.J. Stroud. Why is this such a good match? Yeah, I, I think this is the one that Indianapolis Colts fans are the most excited about. I've seen this just mm-hmm. circulating a lot on social media in recent days. Uh, people being, oh, yeah, Brian Callahan, after watching Joe Burrow in the playoffs, that's the perfect guy for C.J. Stroud. That is the guy for C.J. Stroud. And I completely see it. Uh, you actually did me a favor by putting down the quarterbacks he's worked with here, so I appreciate that. Uh, obviously, Peyton Manning, he was an offensive uh, offensive assistant with the Denver Broncos back in the day uh, and won a Super Bowl with that Denver Broncos team. Uh, so he worked closely with Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning showered him with praise. Um, after that, I believe he went to Detroit to work with Matthew Stafford as Matthew Stafford's QB coach. So another you know, pocket passer who is a little bit mobile, but mostly a pocket passer. And then he went to be the QB coach of the Las Vegas Raiders for a, se- for a season as well. And then again, a guy like Derek Carr, more of a pocket passer, can make a little things happen outside the pocket, but mostly a pocket passer. And then recently as an offensive coordinator with the Cincinnati Bengals, working with Joe Burrow, again, pocket passer, can make some things happen, but he's a pocket passer. Uh, so when you're looking at this class, you know, Callahan is a guy who has a lot of success with those pocket passer guys. He comes from that John Gruden type tree, um, Clint Kub- or not Clint Kubiak, Gary Kubiak. I- I'm thinking of his son right now. Gary Kubiak type of tree who had success with Peyton Manning, obviously in Denver. Um, you're looking at a guy like CJ Stroud to operate that scheme. A very, very smart, savvy quarterback uh, who's a great touch thrower who can extend the ball down the field with, with vertical touch throws, but also can read a defense, get the ball out quick, understands what reads – Uh, need to be made early and often, uh, especially against the blitz. And that's what you're seeing with Joe Burrow there in Cincinnati. You know, it's not, it's not wowing you with arm talent. It's not wowing you with his physical ability to get outside the pocket and scramble for 40 yards. It's a guy who's 
just been dominant from the pocket, who is getting the ball out quick, getting it to his playmakers, dispersing it well. And, and Callahan's doing a great job of isolating the best matchups. You know, he does that not only with uh, Jamar Chase. You know, Jamar Chase gets a lot of one-on-one opportunities, but you got T. Higgins, you got Tyler Boyd. Uh, I think they have Higby or, uh, you know, Hayden Hurst is their tight end. Hayden Sorry. Hurst, yep. Yep, yep. Hayden Hurst is a tight end. He does a great job of getting those weapons, their one-on-one opportunities, and, and just getting them in space. Uh, so you're looking at Brian Callahan, you know, he can make things easy for a pocket passer. He's done it throughout his whole career, and he's definitely done it recently with Joe Burrow. So I think the Brian Callahan, CJ Stroud uh, hype right now is great with Indianapolis Colts fans, but I think it's only going to get stronger and stronger when the Colts talk to him again, I think, next week. So, yeah, I love this pairing. Uh, I really like Brian Callahan. And then obviously if you give him a quarterback like CJ Stroud, who is, I would honestly say, the smartest quarterback in this class, I think that's just a perfect marriage right there. Yeah, and the CJ Stroud or the Colts stuff has really it's it's probably at its fever pitch right now. It, it'll probably get even stronger once the draft gets here. But now that we know the Colts have a top five pick and that Stroud is in the race to become the first overall pick, first quarterback off the board at least, now that all things have kind of become even with Bryce Young and everything, um, this seems a lot more realistic now. It really does. Um, but you you've talked about Stroud early in the draft process already while the season was still going. There are concerns, you know, you're probably going to have to build a pretty good offensive line uh, coming into this. Probably need to add another weapon or at least, you know, you have to retain Paris Campbell. Um, You can't go into the season with the offensive line how it was last year. You know, you can go in with Bernard Ryman being the starter at left tackle, but he's got to have veteran insurance that has started before and done it adequately. And then right guard, same thing over there with Will Fries. It's fine if they're the starters going in, but they have to have insurance because Joe Burrow, you know, he's had an awesome beginning to his his career, had an ACL tear, and was absolutely pummeled in his first couple years. And that line is still not really fixed when you factor in their the offensive line injuries and things like that, which you can't control. But still, you you get someone like that, especially if they're mostly a pocket passer, have to get a, a solid offensive line. Uh, Stroud's also really used to having, you know, those those weapons around him, you know, shoot Jackson Smith, uh, Najigba and Marvin Harrison Jr., Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson before that. So he's used to having weapons. Uh, Callahan too. shoot Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, uh, T Higgins, Joe Mixon. Like these guys are used to having adequate weapons. So the Colts, it'd be a terrific investment in those two, but help them out a little bit too. Just that it's not enough to just stop there. Yeah, and and two things I'll say about Brian Callahan and why I think CJ Stroud would be a, just a great fit for him is I think CJ Stroud's biggest concern is how he responds to pressure. You know, I think we can all kind of agree on that. Even though that Georgia game was amazing and looked perfect, and mm-hmm. he looked like the best quarterback ever. Um, I still think there are concerns about how he responds to pressure. He still was pro football focuses low, like one of the lowest rated quarterbacks uh, in the nation this past year against pressure. You know, that's not just in among draft prospects in the whole nation. So one way to mitigate that is getting a smart offensive mind that understands how to draw up a good quick game. Uh, look at the Bengals this past weekend against the Buffalo Bills. You know, the Buffalo Bills definitely did not have the greatest pass rush, but the Bengals were going out there with three backup offensive linemen. And one of their starters was a guy they took in what the fifth round in Cordell Volson, who started every single game for them. You know, this was not the greatest offensive line. It was arguably the worst in the playoffs left. And Joe Burrow was hardly touched, you know, because Joe Burrow is a smart quarterback that knows how to get the ball out. And Callahan can draw up a good scheme to kind of use, use that quick game. Uh, so I really like Callahan with Stroud to kind of mitigate some of those issues. And the other thing, is when you look at this Colts offense and you look at some of their receivers, don't quote me on Twitter. I'm not trying to sit, be too egregious with this, but type-wise, not player-wise, but just typing-wise, the, the Bengals are succeeding with their one-two punch of having a vertical, like just a dominant vertical player in Jamar Chase, who's a speedster who can run by guys, but also can go up and make contested catches. And then you have T. Higgins who can win over the middle and kind of do everything else. With the Colts, you know, Alec Pierce is that deep threat. He is a deep threat guy who can win vertically, could run past guys, and also go up and win those contested catches. And he can slide into that Jamar Chase-like role. 
Obviously, he's nowhere near Jamar Chase, guys. So please don't don't clip that. But that's what I'm saying here. Just the roles that he could play. He could play very similar to to Jamar Chase. And then obviously, Michael Pittman Jr. and T. Higgins are very comparable as well. So I think that he can work with these weapons. Obviously, you want to give them a bigger, more reliable slot receiver to go with that, like like a Tyler Boyd type. Uh, but I really do think Brian Callahan can get the most out of this offense. And I think C.J. Stroud is that quarterback in this class that can work with him. Yeah, I would certainly know how to how to do with Jonathan Taylor, what he's done with Joe Mixon. And uh, right. having Jelani Woods would not be a bad factor either. Yes. Uh, so maybe he'll get used a little bit. Uh, so next, <laughs> maybe Giants offensive coordinator Mike Kafka can recapture this year's magic by coming to Indy with Will, Will Levis. But first... The NFL playoffs are here. We're really excited about our new sponsor and betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. It's FanDuel. You guys are familiar with them. You probably love them. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, if you guys join today, you can get started with $150 in free bets. Guaranteed. That's when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a better chance at a bigger payroll with a same game parlay. Yeah, Tyler Boyd against Kansas City is an intriguing matchup this weekend as he is just $5,300 against the 24th ranked team against the wide receivers. And you know they're going to be throwing in that game because Pat Mahomes is on the other side. He's going to be lighting up no matter how good that Bengals defense is. The Bengals offense is going to have to score to keep up with Pat Mahomes. So Tyler Boyd and basically anyone on that Bengals offense, I have my eye on for sure. Uh, this is all on the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Jake, so we're getting into this next matchup here, and, and this is just one I really like. Uh, so I'll probably go on a little bit of a tangent here in a second, but I'll let you start. Mike Kafka, Will Levis. I know a lot of fans don't like Will Levis, but I think there's something there, man. And I think Kafka with his experience in not only in this Brian Dable type system, but also before that with Kansas city, I think this is a really good fit. I think they, these two could work really well together. Yeah. I think this makes just about as much sense as the one we just talked about. You know, if you take, if you take Levis's pass, you know, with Penn state, he was a lot more of a rusher. He only had 73 carries last year, but 312 for his career. When you factor in the last few years there, Right. He could he could do a lot of what Daniel Jones can. Now, Jones is, was a really good athlete coming out. Uh, not that Levis isn't, but I think Jones is probably – there's just more there to, to indicate that he's he's more of a rushing weapon. But still, I just really like that. You, you kind of give Kafka someone he is familiar with. Same thing with Jonathan Taylor and Saquon Barkley. And honestly, the, the Colts receiving group is better than the Giants is. So you're kind of giving Kafka more to work with there or at least some some equal parts, you can give him a vision of, of what he is familiar with. So I, I like that a lot. Um, Kafka's offense was pretty balanced. Uh, 520 pass attempts, 520 rushes. Uh, literally cannot get more even than that. Uh, so yeah, I, I like that one a lot. He's obviously worked with Patrick Mahomes, Alex Smith, and Daniel Jones. That's three guys there who can get out and move. Um, you know, Jones is is the one that's probably the most fleet of foot and, and uses his mobility the most. But obviously Mahomes and Smith have made a career of being able to escape and, and get outside the pocket as well. So I really like this one. This is this one makes a lot of sense too. Yeah, when when I would circle what offenses work best for Will Levis and his projection to the NFL, it, I would probably think more of the Frank Reich, Doug Peterson. Uh, maybe even some of the McVeigh and Shanahan stuff, which would lead to Raheem Morris also being a good fit for this because he would bring some of that Shanahan and McVeigh stuff with him. But uh, I do think that the Brian Dable type tree is also a really good one for him, especially what they did with Daniel Jones this past season. Uh, because if you guys are are looking at Will Levis's stats last year, it looks like he's not a rushing quarterback. You know, he's a pocket passer, uh, but he did work through a turf toe all season. So he just wasn't the same athlete that he typically is. If you want to see him as a real athlete, go watch uh, 2021. He was running over guys, using that big frame, using some speed uh, and looking really good as a rushing quarterback. And I think that's the avenue to take with him early in his career, because 
He's not going to be this super developed passer from day one. He's not going to be a guy uh, who can sit in the pocket, complete 70% of his passes, uh, and just be surgical down the field. He's a guy who's going to have some inconsistencies with his mechanics, some inconsistencies with his reads. He's not going to be perfect in, in all phases. Uh, so I think a good way that they can kind of ease him in is doing what they did with Daniel Jones this past season in New York, you know, uh, encouraging the scramble. You know, the scramble was a big part of Daniel Jones' game. Uh, and that's how he was adding a lot of uh, EPA per play. You know, he's adding a lot of production on plays that likely weren't going to have production. Even if it's a one read, two read thing and then scramble, that's 10 more yards, 15 more yards than what you're going to get regardless. So uh, I really like that aspect for younger quarterbacks. It kind of mitigates some of the issues. And then on top of that, you know, there was design quarterback runs. There was a very nuanced and, and aggressive rushing attack, which was really good. And then you got that Brian Dable type passing attack, which is a lot of vertical crossers, a lot of getting the ball down the field. We saw it work with Josh Allen uh, the year before in Buffalo and take Josh Allen's new heights. Uh, and they were able to do a little bit of that with Daniel Jones as well this year, you know, instituting a little bit of that Brian Dable type offense. So yeah, I really, really think Mike Kafka, if he's going to bring this type of offense that he did in, in New York this past season to Indy, he's one of those guys who can make Will Levis work. You know, Will Levis is not a guy who's going to thrive in every single system, uh, especially early on. If you try to make him like a like a a pocket passer that is going to have to like if you put him in like the Bruce Arian scheme, I know he's a big arm guy, but if you put in the Bruce <laughs> Arian scheme where you're asking him to just air it out and, and read things oh, down the God. field and, and attack split safeties and stuff like that's just not what he's going to do. But if you get mm. him in a quick passing attack that can get the ball out of his hands, encourage him to scramble, use him as a weapon running the ball, I really think that there is an avenue to success for Will Levis, and then he can reach that potential later on. Uh, so, yeah, I think an early offense like what Mike Kafka was doing for Daniel Jones this past season, try to get him productive and in rhythm early on, uh, I really think that could be a good thing for him. Yeah, I, I have absolutely no problems with that one. It's, yeah, that. I'm curious if, if you know, Mike Kafka, if he is as high up the board as, as Brian Callahan, because I think the, the, the two of those could work as well, Callahan and Levis. You could mix them and match them. But, yeah, yeah that's, man, that these just make too much sense. I don't know. It seems too good <laughs> to be true. I'm a, little, I'm a little worried about it at this point because it's like. Will the Colts I, actually go an offensive coach? <laughs> that, this is what I was like, look. Right. I love Raheem Morris so much, like so much. Raheem Morris is my favorite. And if they got him, I would be 100% backing him. But at the end of the day, it's better to get these offensive coaches because they are just the most beneficial to mm -hmm. a young quarterback. You know, it's just, it's the way that the NFL is going right now. I think, is it yeah. is it all offensive coaches are left now in the playoffs? Is the four coaches remaining are all offensive coaches now with Sean McDermott mm -hmm. being knocked out. So all high end offensive coaches and, and offensive coordinators underneath them that are calling plays too. Like it's just the way of the NFL. Now it's all about that quarterback and getting guys like Callahan or Kafka or Steichen. That's the new trend. Uh, so yeah. And if you can get any of these guys and pair them with any of the young quarterbacks that they're choosing, you can, you can draw up a very good offense early on. Mm hmm. Well, we got one more for you guys, like pigs rooting for truffles. We found yet another match made in heaven. It is Shane Steichen and Anthony Richardson. All right, so I'm going to rewind myself a little bit back to Jalen Hurts a couple years ago coming out of the draft. Mm -hmm. I saw a guy who could run the hell out of the ball. He, ha he has a great build. He could take punishment. He was taking a lot of big hits. He was running up the middle. You know, he was leading Oklahoma well there. I was not in love with him as a passer. Uh, I thought he did have a big arm, but, you know, he kind of had a slow release. And, you know, I just, he needed some time. He was a second, third, he was a, a second, third rounder, you know, for a reason. That's, he was a day two prospect. A, a lot of, a lot of it because of that. But he developed into this much better passer. He's still a great runner, but He's able to do a lot more now. And that's what you do is you give these guys a chance. You see they have the tools. You know, they already have the thing they can lean on with their running. But if you see those traits as a passer, you you invest in that. And, you know, for the Eagles, that's paid off in Jalen Hurts. It kicked Carson Wentz out of town. It's got them, you know, making deep playoff runs now. He's an MVP candidate. And uh, that's one thing that makes Anthony Richardson so polarizing now is because he's just mainly seen as a running back who has some quality passing traits. A lot of, a lot of people are seeing that and he is, he is raw as a passer. Um, 
but you know he's you absolutely you see some of these things especially on all 22 and he's got some ability to sling it man he's you, you've you've said it, you've been kind of pounding the table on on this thing is he has the traits you know just just make the pick and coach him up you know like yeah. don't say he can't do it just invest in his development yeah and, and the biggest thing before we even talk about Steichen and Anthony Richardson together is just all this is a moot point if you're not going to develop the mechanics of Anthony Richardson. You're not going to get him a QB coach that can work with him. You're not going to send him off to Tom House and Adam Dado and, and fixing that lower half because it is a mess right now. He needs a lot of work to get where you need him to be to where he can be a more accurate passer. And he can go from completing 50% of his passes in college to maybe a, a low 60s in the NFL, which is great. That, I mean, that's great for a guy of his stature because we're talking about a guy who's 6'5", 230 240 like this is a big human being who's probably going to run around 44 like he's a massive human who is also lightning fast uh and if you add him into that scheme that Shane Steichen was able to do with Jalen Hurts this past season you could have a really really good quarterback and again the biggest thing while I why I keep pushing these mobile passers especially in young quarterbacks is you don't have to be as precise you know when NFL quarterback when rookie quarterbacks come into the NFL it's all it's everything's so much more condensed than what it was in college. You know, you could be from Alabama where you're throwing to 10 first round picks every single game. So they're always open. You could be from Ohio state. Again, guys are always open or you could be from, from Houston or, or Florida, even where your guys aren't open, but it's still college football. You know, at the end of the day, there's good, receivers are going to be open more in college football than they are in the NFL because everything's so much more condensed and attacking in the NFL. Now, if you add a scheme like Shane Steichen, where they use that quarterback as an extra rushing threat, where the running game is just so diverse and just spread out, you are going to take this defense that's so condensed and aggressive, and you're going to stretch them as wide as possible. Stretch them as wide as possible. You're going to make them think on every single snap, and that makes more passing lanes. That makes more throwing lanes for your quarterback. So a quarterback like Anthony Richardson, where in college, I mean, what, he's a 51% passer, like a 50% completion percentage, like not good at all. If you can add more windows to him, you can you can just open up those those throwing lanes a little bit more, and then obviously work on his mechanics. You can get him where you need him to be because if this guy can get to, I'm not even saying get to like 66, 67 percent completion percentage because then he's a top five quarterback in the league if he gets up there because just the running threat with a, a consistent passer is just insane. Uh, but if you can get him the low 60s like Cam Newton was at or what Josh Allen's typically been in most of his career, like you're still talking about a top 10, top 15 quarterback because of what he can do with his legs. If you could add a, a fairly consistent passing attack with that, he can be just as good. Um, so yeah, Anthony Richardson, if you get him in this quick, this quick hitting RPO scheme that, that just gets guys more open than a typical passing offense, along with the added you know pressure on him running. I mean, Jalen Hurts had, what, 165 yards rushing uh, or 165 rushing attempts this past season. If you give that to a guy like Anthony Richardson, I mean, again, this is a tank running at you at four, four speed. Uh, I, I can only imagine what he can do with proper development. So yeah, I, I love Anthony Richardson with Shane Steichen. And for you guys who also like Bryce young, I think Bryce young with Shane Steichen would be phenomenal as well because of that RPO scheme. You know, Bryce young is not really the most mobile quarterback. So obviously you're going to take down those QB runs, but you're going to do a lot of the RPO stuff and get that ball out quick, which Bryce young can do at a high level as well. So this is kind of a mixture here where I'm going to say Shane Steichen with Anthony Richardson, but also with Bryce Young. If you guys want to go that way, I think that's another one that could work as well. Yeah, and to the point with Steichen is, you know, we've seen in his past, you know, that he, he's worked with some prolific passers. Uh, Phillip Rivers back with the Chargers. Phillip was slinging it and was, again, one of the most prolific passers of his time. He's up there, you know, in the upper echelon of, of record holders. Justin Herbert quickly became a a volume passer he's put up historic numbers for the first few years of his career Jalen Hurts has made the jump to being a a lot better passer Steichen has been a part of all this so you know you said you have to invest in in him get him a good QB coach and you know work on his mechanics there's nothing to say that Steichen wouldn't wouldn't champion that same exact approach uh, so definitely definitely in on that one and he knows how to use a quarterback uh, to run the ball with a frame that he can handle, because uh, I think there's a difference. You know, you mentioned Bryce Young. You wouldn't you wouldn't have the same amount because you got a little guy there. You're going to get him killed. Um, but there's a way you can run these bigger quarterbacks and still be smart about it. You know, this 
I mean, the pl- the player plays a role in it as well because they have to be wise about the hits they take. But there's smart ways coaches can get that going. Yeah, just don't be psychotic like Josh Allen. I think you'll be fine. Josh Allen's trying yeah. to hurdle guys and he's diving into dudes and stuff like that. You know, maybe be a little more tampered off than that. But like, you know, I, I know a lot of people look at these injuries to mobile quarterbacks, but there's a lot of pocket passes that get hurt too. They take a lot of hits in the pocket as well. Look at Matt Ryan got hurt in the pocket. Jimmy Garoppolo got yeah. hurt in the pocket this year. You know, there's plenty of pocket guys that go down. Injuries happen regardless. Yes, exposing them to more hits can also lead to more injuries. But again, it, it I, I, I think of it like this. It may, maybe it lessens his career by like five years. Let's say it does that, right? That's big. But if I'm going to get like 10 years of, of elite quarterback play instead of 15 years of very good quarterback play, I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. That's my best shot to win a Super Bowl. I'll take the 10 years of elite quarterback play. But uh, in the end, I, I really think Anthony Richardson can be a very good quarterback in the NFL. The, the mechanics need to need to get around. But, I mean, we're talking about a guy with great pocket presence, uh, great mobility, great arm, uh, really good flashes in college. And I think a guy like Shane Steichen is the type of person that can unlock him and turn him into the quarterback that he can be one day. Um, not every coach in this cycle can do that. You know, I don't think uh, a Dan Quinn and Brian Schottenheimer can do that no. for, for <laughs> Anthony Richardson. Uh, but I think a guy like Shane Steichen is fully equipped to do something like that. Now, I'll put you on the spot here because it's been on theme for this week, but uh, give me the combo you think is most likely, and then the combo you would want the most. Oh man, yeah. I mean, you know, Anthony Richardson's my guy, so the one I would want is Steichen and Richardson because those are both my my ones. You know, at both of these openings, you know, my my head coach one and my QB one. So I would definitely take that. But uh, I think Brian Callahan and CJ Stroud is one that. Colts fans would really, really rally behind. And I think it's the most likely one to happen because uh, our guy, Sean McGinnis, uh, he actually said in a Twitter thread the other day that uh, Callahan's interview did really went really well. Like the Colts were really, really impressed by him. I fully expect him to be in that final five grouping and get that in-person interview sometime next week when, when he's allowed to interview with the Colts in person. Um, I, I fully expect Brian Callahan to be there until the very end. And, and again, I think C.J. Stroud might be the Colts quarterback one. So I think that's the most likely one. And I think, again, Colts fans are going to do cartwheels if that one were to come true. Yeah, both both my realistic and the one I want, that it's Callahan and Stroud. I have, you know, I went from not barely knowing who Brian Callahan was a week or two <laughs> ago to like, I'm, I'm like all in now. You know what I mean? Um, it's funny what a little information <laughs> research can do for you. Right. Um, but no, I, I really like what he brings to the table. I like his past. I like what he's doing now with the Bengals. Uh, Stroud, I'm definitely on board. But I think it's realistic. One, all the reasons you said. Interview apparently went well. Callahan has a lot of Chris Ballard and Colts connections. And then I, we've already discussed that we think it's either Stroud or Levis at the top of the Colts QB board. And... Chris Ballard said, you know, the, their best chance for getting a quarterback was probably 2021, but they went and got Carson Wentz. And he said, if they think their guys in this draft, they'll trade up and go get him. I don't think Ballard is going to be denied again. If, if he has a quarterback he likes, I don't think he's going to let it pass him by this time, even if he has to go a few picks to number one and do it. I think he'll go get someone like Stroud. And then Callahan, it just it just makes all the sense in the world. And then, you know, Jeff Saturday has this this trump card of, you know, I'm from the Colts glory days. Jim Irsay loves me. But Brian Callahan has the Peyton Manning card as well. So, you know, if if you're if you're tugging at Jim Irsay's heartstrings, then Brian Callahan can play kind of a similar card there. So I I think that that goes one and the same with me. I think it's the most realistic and it's the one I think I want most. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's all we got today, Jake. I mean, we'll be back sometime mm-hmm. tomorrow, guys, to either talk more about the head coaching search or more about quarterbacks, because that's all you guys really want to hear about right now. I don't even know what else we could really go into. Uh, make sure you guys are following us on social media at Locked On Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks 2 on Twitter. Also, subscribe to Locked On Colts podcast on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast. Bring you the local insights you love to the national spotlight with daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories. Locked On NFL, available on YouTube wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys.
tomorrow.